Hi guys, Colin James Polt here and welcome once again to my YouTube channel. Hi guys, well I hope you had a fantastic Christmas and an equally fantastic New Year. Well here we are in 2020. Doesn't that sound strange saying 2020 instead of 2019? I've written 2020 down a few times uh, over the past month and uh, it feels weird too. But anyway, we're not in the studio today doing any recordings. We're actually... Ding, 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 ding. If we go out into the hall, if you hear any eminence of cries or dissatisfaction coming from behind that door, that's Leon's bedroom door. He's playing on his Xbox at the moment. He doesn't know I'm making a video, so... But there you go, gunfire. Oh yeah, he's 14, I think he's killed something or someone. But anyway, here we are at my boiler. It's a glowworm ultimate. And if you remember, I did a repair video last year. I think it might have been early last year on the oxygenating motor. So briefly, <coughs> again, <laughs> uh, you know, the boiler's isolated, but on the top here, just there, there, that is an induction motor which drives a fan. And on top of that, there, there should be a fan to keep this motor cool. Um, indeed there is, it's at the back there somewhere. I might have put it up on top. I think I'll put it up on top, I did. Uh, if I just grab that for you guys, so you can have a look. Uh, here it is, this is the, um, fan that keeps the motor cool which drives the fan which uh, feeds oxygen in, into the combustion chamber and you can see the center of it is quite melted there that actually sits on top of that part of the shaft on the um, motor for the oxygenating fan which is inside this cowling so basically you've got the flue there and there's two parts to the flue there's an inner part and then there's an outer part uh, inside there and the inner part it takes the exhaust gas out and the outer part brings oxygen back in via this fan here which is driven by this motor and it goes into the oxygenating chamber or the combustion chamber down there and on a combustion chamber you've got <coughs> as you have on most boilers you've got a little sight hole so you can see whether it's actually working or not now last year it packed up uh, we had no heating, no cold water, oh, sorry, cold water, no hot water or heating. So I called them out and they had a look and they said, oh yeah, rah, rah, rah. Um, the uh, motor had seized up, okay, which is this part here. And all the guy did was like stand about three feet away, squirt the motor with WD-40, hoping that it would get into the bearings. There's two bearings, there's one top, and there's one right underneath, and you see the sh it's there somewhere, it's right under there. Now these aren't ball bearing bearings, they're phosphor bronze bearings, they're like bushing. And of course what happened, the, um, you know, the bushings got tired, motors got hot, they run hot, and um, the little plastic cooling fans popped off the top, and subsequently it's all got hot and things seized up. So. What the engineer did was, um, I only found this out later, he, he took this off because it was just like flopped on the side of the motor. It's got that height, it melted the, the plastic underneath here. And then he just spun up the motor with a screwdriver and off it went. And uh, so there you go, fixed, great. And then I think it packed up again late last year and um, when he fixed it the first time, um, I got him out again and he just did the same thing, cut the squirts of WD, uh, said they'll order a new motor, and then he spun it up with a screwdriver. So I actually eyeballed what he was doing. And the promised new motor never came. So, you know, I mean, anyway, um, we had it checked 
just before Christmas, I think it is. And um, it was serviced, apparently. We had the boiler serviced. They didn't spot that there was no fan sitting on top of the motor, which that should have been put right on the last inspection by the engineer. Um, and there is corrosion on the top of the boiler. If I go at the top there, well, yeah, you can see there where all this stuff's run down from the breather. And it's pretty rusty. It hasn't quite got to the flu yet. But the guy who checked it this year um, said that basically... <coughs> Danger! Safety warning. Do not use. That's the sticker he put on it. Um, he said you can still use it. I thought, huh? It's good, but it's, it says do not use. But he says the rust is, or corrosion, it's not quite reached the flu yet, so it's almost there. But actually looking at it, it looks like it is there. But anyway, he said you can carry on using it. You're due for a new boiler, which we've been promised uh, for over a year now. Well, actually, to be fair, nine months. And we've been promised a new fan, uh, sorry, new motor for a good nine months, ten months now, being January 2020. So, oh, we're due for new radiators and a new boiler, combi boiler radiators with um, stats on them. But will that day arrive? Or is this just going to go on and on? Now, I know what sort of induction motor it is because A, I've done research on Google, and B, there's a, a label on the side there. Um, so this time I'm just going to say well look you know if you don't fix it I shall get a new motor and fix it myself I mean you know I've done mechanical engineering electronics electrical engineering and um, you know back in my youth which in full fairness is 35 years ago and although there's little bits of it left up there in my brain I can quite easily swap out an induction motor for this boiler that's not a problem uh, so that's what I'm going to say I'm going to say look either you do it or I'm going to fix it myself sorry for waffling on guys but I'm just like at the point where I'm thinking you know I'm pretty fed up with this so anyway heating packed up last night I thought strange no heating no hot water so I open the cupboard and I can hear like a um, sound which is obviously um, this motor had seized this poor little motor had seized up again and this is a coil here and um, without the fan on top without it spinning this coil just gets hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter until the point at the point where it will catch fire um, because it's just like a you know electric fire basically without that fan on there take time but over time it will get hot and eventually um, catch light so I've let it cool down I have turned the blades here and that I've put some lube in there and guys that was solid you could not just flick that like that it got that hot and the bear, and the phosphor bronze bushing bearings because they're not normal ball bearings um, it got that hot the whole lot just stopped so down at my local good old Lidl, Lidl, yeah, I've got some graphite oil. This is great stuff. It's got graphite in it, so get it in there, and um, it will take the temperature as well. I don't know what the running temperature of this uh, motor is because I haven't looked up the specs um, with its proper little fan on. I might be able to get that back on there somehow. But anyway, I'm going to do a test run. So I've I've lubed the top and bottom bushing on the bearings, which is the top there, and you, you can't quite see it, but it's it's way under there. But you can get at it with a a straw and a spray can, which I've done. I'll let it sit for about half an hour to cool down. Um, while it was hot, I put some lube in there. I'll put some lube in when it's cold. So let's fire it up and um, see if it works okay so I want the heating on 
constant and then put the isolator back on and what I'll do as I flick this switch we'll aim the camera up where the heat uh, where the pump is god I can't read my words out today it's because it's 2020 we'll keep uh, the camera on the motor and see if it spins up ready one two three oh yeah and she lives so let's have a little peek through the hole yeah we have combustion yes there it goes it seems to be running fine so what I'm going to do now is um, I've already called it in so they'll be out within 24 hours they said they don't carry spares but I'll just say well look you know if can you get a new motor for it that's all it needs until we get the boiler replaced if they just get a new motor for it just to tie us over that'd be great you know um, otherwise I'll just do it myself because it's winter now it's cold and um, you know we have um, a baby here and my grandson um, and it gets bloody cold I tell you so this has got to be fixed right that's my ran to the boiler finished with um, you know so I'm going to see if I can repair this you can see it's got that hot it's actually burnt and this was way last year and they didn't bother replacing any parts and that's ridiculous so I mean if, if you didn't know what you were doing you'd be stuck without a boiler really um, it's only because of my mechanical engineering experience and uh, background that I'm able to sort of fix this sort of stuff so there you go I'm going to repair that put that back on because there's no point in running it without the fan that sits on top of that spigot over there that I can't reach while holding the camera just sits on top of there just to keep the, the motor cool while it's spinning there's a big old cylindrical fan in there um, those two pipes take a sample of um, uh, the um, oxygen uh, feed that down to the combustion chamber and um, yeah etc etc I don't particularly fancy replacing it it's a bit of a, a little bit of a pig to do but it can be done if they won't replace the motor then that's what I'll do until we get a new boiler okay guys well that's it I don't know whether you found that interesting or not if not sorry but if you did then great and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe anyway catch you later cheers in bye